from Sweden uh, on the tour with Uncle Acid and also blood ceremony. I let them introduce themselves. So first name and function in the band and please take the mic each time you speak. Thank you. Hello, uh, Jeme. I play drums in Gaupa. And my name is Emma and I am the vocalist in Gaupa. So uh, first of all, um, can you give us like a short biography of the band? Uh, I know you have like two albums and one EP and I discovered today that you have also been out of the band Mother of God. So maybe you have like the evolution, how you come to this band uh, when you created this band. Uh, well, good question. Um, well, uh, with Gaupa we started it 2017, I think. Mm. And um, Mother of God split it up 2014 and I still wanted to, to have a rock band. So we talked about it and a couple of later a couple of years later we, we started Gaupa. Starting yamming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was a huge fan of Mother of God and obviously uh, when they were playing and uh, so I also always wanted to play stoner rock music. Uh, so when they split up, I was super sad. But then it kind of worked out for me because I asked them to, do you want to play with me? <laughs> and they said yes. So I actually reached out uh, to uh, you and Daniel at first. And then we kind of, the other guys just came as well. Yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, let's ask uh, David. Let's, let's ask Jarka. It and happened really fast. In like a couple of days, we had a band. Yeah, and we just started to sniff each other out in the rehearsal pit. Um, just jamming for fun, really. So, and then nothing really happened for a while. <laughs> yeah, I think when we released our first single, we got uh, like our second gig was at Sweden Rock. Yeah. Then we realized we should really do something with it, and here we are. Yeah. A couple of years later. <laughs> okay. So in the meantime, and uh, you released the uh, last album in 2022, if I'm not. Mm -hmm mistaken um, I forgot the name for I'm uh, myriad yeah yeah <laughs> uh, what changed because you signed to nuclear blast uh, in between and um, you came from cosmic artifacts mm -hmm. uh, was that a big change uh, yeah it was um, not for our music because we can do whatever we like we are a little bit progressive so we, you never know what's gonna happen with the music but um, the big change is uh, opportunities like this, touring with Uncle Acid and reach out to a lot bigger audience. Mm. Uh, they have helped us a lot with everything, social media and connections. And yeah, yeah, so, so it, everything has grew exponentially. Yeah. yeah, you want to add something? No, that's just, uh, we're very happy with our team over at Nuclear Blast. They are very nice to us. Yeah, really, <laughs> really good people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, before we turn to the music, um, I would just wanted to know if the the band for you is a full time occupation, or do you do other things uh, besides? Yeah, yeah, we have regular jobs <laughs> at home, but we, uh, you know, we try to do this as much as we can. Yeah. It's you know fina financials that's in the way, mm. and maybe for the future we want to increase the. The, yeah. Yeah, the the gigs and uh, the releases. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Really depends if and make it a full time. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's the dream. That's the dream. <laughs> it really depends uh, if people likes us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are the reactions to the last album? Um, I mean, now that you're on Nuclear Blast, and I mean the. What I read from reviews, you had some really raving reviews. I gave you nine of ten, nine out of ten on uh, the Musica site, oh, and I you. think I wasn't the only one. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think overall it has been the best yeah. reviews we have gotten. Yeah, uh, the album was uh, very well received, and uh, also we we reached, as you said, a lot more people. So it's very humbling and. It, Quite a surprise <laughs> to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now let's speak a bit uh, about the music um, because you said already you're a bit on the progressive side, and I mean you're not typical stoner. Could you tell us what uh, your influences are and what is still influencing the band 
Um, you can name bands, you can name genres, whatever, you persons, singers, singers. Uh, well, I, w I think uh, the sound comes uh, from the fact that everyone in the band are songwriters. And uh, so everyone contributes to the writing process and everyone has such different uh, musical backgrounds and also uh, musical influences. And that then we try every idea out and, and sometimes someone has written one part and another one writes another part and it just it ends up like this. So it's just a lucky coincidence for us, I guess. Yeah, yeah. The, our musical backgrounds and uh, what we like is really, really different, you know. Uh, Jerka, the bassist, is more like punk, he, and uh, I'm really like melancholic stuff and like dark stuff, opeth and black metal and that stuff. <laughs> black metal not so much in this music, but you know, in, in the fields, in the, on the drums, I, I, I take it with me. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Jan has a yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah, if I just uh, have listened this afternoon the Gopa EP, I adore it also. So uh, you have, I hear all the influences. It like goes wider, I think, than on the Mother of God. Mother of God was really the stoner metal, stoner rock, yeah. and now you you have more influences. Yeah, even people listening to hard rock, people listening to uh, epic doom metal will also like you. That's I think uh, I hear also some epic doom metal maybe indirectly in it, like the bands like Candlemas stuffing mm. a bit, uh, not much, but really a bit. That's my idea. <laughs> what are your um, as you, each one of you, the like uh, one person as musician that are uh, very inspiring you to do what you do on stage. So you as singer and you as musician, what are the main uh, people that you look upon to to be what you are on stage? All right. <laughs> Well, musicians, non -musicians maybe. I think uh, the way I act out on stage uh, yeah. comes uh, mostly from yeah. my upbringing uh, yeah. being at the circus school. Mm -hmm. So I, I was, uh, I, I rode the unicycle, I meddled with some fire and I was a contortionist <laughs> in my youth. Uh, so I think it comes quite naturally just to move around. And when I dance like I do on stage, people think I'm onto something. But when I dance like this at a club, people think I'm on something like heavy drugs. So it depends <laughs> on the context, I think. So that is how my, I don't know, stage uh, movements are. But, uh, I, lo I love it. Uh, I saw the official live clip and I said, yeah, that was the one thing that uh, catched my eye. You, you're, you're dancing on stage, but it's, uh, it's a bit like the, the band I have here a t-shirt of on uh, Black Mirrors. The, the singer is also a bit the same style and she's also dancing a bit. So check them out if you don't know no, them. Black yeah. Mirrors, yeah. Yeah, so like yeah. Indian. yeah. <laughs> and maybe you and then you can give the mic to Frederick. Yeah, well, m my biggest influence on drums and how I approach drums is Martin Lopez from F Opeth, but he's playing in Soen now. But it was the time with Opeth. That's, yeah, my absolutely biggest influence on how I play drums okay yeah. good influences yeah. <laughs> interesting influences um i have a, a I, it's a, actually it's a bit a stupid question but i am going to ask it anyway um because yeah i'm a music freak and um of course i love swedish bands and what surprises me is that there are so many swedish stoner bands like Kadavar and things like that but especially so many stoner bands with this with a female singer i mean you have the riven uh, you have hot bread um, you name it blue spills avatarium spiders lycanthropy um, what's happening in sweden <laughs> is it uh, a cultural thing is it uh, um, what is it i mean in belgium we, we are yeah, we we only have a couple of bands with with female singers, and it's more or less always in the symphonic genre, except Black Mirrors. But in Sweden, it's so interesting. I mean, you have so many interesting bands. Uh, well, I think when uh, I started with Mother of God, two thousand eight, uh, the stoner rock was almost dead. It was only the big bands that were still alive, like Dozer and stuff. And something happened to. 2010 or something and it was bands like 
in the in in the scene in Gothenburg was like hundreds of 70s psychedelic bands, and uh, in, in the same time, like where we come from, a lot of stoner bands appeared. Don't know what happened. So maybe something in the water. I don't know. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> nice water. <laughs> bring, bring a bottle next time. Yeah, yeah. We will do. We'll do some or fall sell it on tour. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks a lot for the answer. Um, anyway, so um, the tour just started. I think uh, it's the third date in the tour, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Some impressions so far. Who wants to answer? You answer. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would like to do this all the time. Yeah. Uh, it's not a lot of sleep in comfortable beds. And uh, well, we carry stuff around and, you know, drive in the car a lot of the time. But oh my Lord, to be playing loud, loud and live yeah. in front of people is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had the best time at Desert West London yesterday. Yeah. That was unbelievable. Highlights so For far. For sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine that was a special uh, occasion, uh, Desert Fest. I would have been, would have loved to have been there. Um, so I give the mic to Jan, uh, which has a, a nasty question. He always asks. No. <laughs> but before the nasty question, uh, general question, uh, I see you have two dates coming on more now for this tour with uh, Uncle Asset, and then further on with uh, LA, which is, which is a bit different in style, but I know them because I saw them also three times live, and I interviewed them also. How you look forward to these days with uh, also LA Rich and My Day Valley? I don't know how they pronounce this band, but... Uh, we say made a veil, okay. but I don't know what they would like to be called. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know the bass player cool. in Made a Veil, and she's super nice. So yeah. that, I, I really look forward to that one as well. Yeah. But yeah. of course, yeah. Ellie Witch as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. gonna be. Yeah. They're really cool. Yeah. yeah so we we're really excited about it. the whole tour. Actually, it's. Yeah. I didn't know. I'm already fan excited. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be great. Do you have an asked a question for us? Yeah. Well, it's a very <laughs> musical question. Uh, as I suppose you're also. Mu musical fans, uh, albums buying, uh, CDs buying. <laughs> um, suppose you're on a desert island, you don't have internet, you have no phones, you have no radio, you have only a record player and or a CD player and you can only listen to three albums for the rest of your life. Which three albums would you take with you on a desert island? I don't know who's going to start this question. Mm. You can start. <coughs> One album that I would bring for sure is uh, Mark Lanigan's Bubblegum. Love that album. I would also say Queens of the Stone Age, Songs for the Deaf. And maybe something by Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, I think uh, Opeth, obviously. Sorry. Um, I think it's so hard. It's my favorite band, but I think I'm still holding on Watershed. Really love that album, um, and I need a stoner band as well. That's y really hard. You can bring Gaupa, and we can yeah. play. Yeah, together. we can play with Gaupa. We <laughs> take the last album with Gaupa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, hmm, this is really hard. Really hard. Mm -mm. Maybe something with Steven Wilson. Um, I think. Um, Fear of a Blank, something, I don't remember. It was uh, with Porcupine Tree, a dark album. I, I think I take that one. It's Keep really it good. Close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have to choose. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, the melancholic stuff is what yeah. I like. But yeah. I think it depends uh, on what day you get yeah. asked this yeah, question. Sure, sure. Yesterday we answered a bit differently. Yeah, but <laughs> it depends on the mood, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It depends. Um, I mean, it's a difficult question, but uh, for instance, I would al always take 
a soul artist with me like Marvin Gaye or Sam Cooke or mm -hmm. something like, just to cry uh, from time yeah, to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> therapeutic. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice. Therapeutic. That's why you choose your <laughs> sad album. Yeah, yeah I, need, I need the sadness. <laughs> and I uh, just uh, bought today uh, Ella Fitzgerald album too, so uh, that was also going to be one of my uh, on the island, I think. The next question for final, finaling the, in the interview is for Fred. All right. So we talked about uh, yeah new near futures plans already a bit the tour with LA Witch. Uh, what more can we expect? I also saw that you have uh, and I'm really looking forward to that one uh, a gig at the Alcatraz Fest or there are other festivals and uh, if there are other plans as well regarding recording videos or shooting something I don't know. Yeah. So we're going down to Freak Valley Festival. Um, quite soon after we get home to Sweden after this tour it's like a week after or something. yeah and then it's Al the Alcatraz festival in August in August yeah. and uh, then a couple of the guys are having babies so typical guy thing I would say in this band it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I think we're going to write some new music then and that is something we also really like to yeah look forward Fo to focus on the new album yes jamming Yes. So jamming in the summer, so that. Uh, no, yeah, in, yeah, autumn, in the autumn, I think. And, yeah, and, and yeah, in, yeah, in the summer yeah, as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Nice period to to make new music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, so dark in Sweden anyway, so we just might as well be in the okay. rehearsal pit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe at another place, uh, but you will record in Sweden. I think so. We usually yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. I think we we, we have. Uh, uh, one, uh, uh, a friend that we have recorded every album with, he's great. We're gonna do it one more time at least. Mm, yeah, it's very comfortable to work with him and he knows, he knows us, us yeah. very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but he but knows uh, how to like make the music better. Yeah, yeah I guess that's a big uh, advantage if somebody mm. really can translate what you want and he understands what you need and uh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. No, not a problem at all. Yeah. So uh, last question and an, imp an important one. Um, where can people find you on social media um, if they want to check out the music, the band? Yeah, well, we are like everywhere. We have uh, a couple of music videos on YouTube and Spotify. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, fa Facebook, everywhere except Bandcamp. Bandcamp, yeah. Uh, you can find us everywhere except Twitter. 